<laughs> Today we've got something very, very special. This is the QNAP H686, or TS, H686. It's a six bay NAS, four, three and a half inch, two, three and a half inch, two internal M.2. This thing is awesome. We reviewed it a while back. QNAP actually offers two different operating systems, their hero operating system and their base operating system. But under the hood, this thing's an Intel Xeon. We could basically do whatever we want with it. The problem is, you know, at the back for the rear I.O., you know, we got the four two and a half gig ports. Those are based around the Realtek 8125. And we've got two USB five gigabit ports and there's expansion slots on the back. So if we pop the top, we can see a little bit more clearly what we're working with. We have two X8 slots, one here and one here on this side. Our Xeon CPUs on this side along with our dual M.2. This is basically a computer in a box. I was doing some testing and it occurred to me if I wanted to do an apples to apples comparison of QNAP's operating system with TrueNAS Core, this box would be the ideal box to do it in. It's a Xeon D, it has user upgradable memory, completely ordinary. Let's put TrueNAS on this thing. So depending on what model you got, you've either got a single blower motor or a dual blower motor. This is actually a standard form factor. This is not a proprietary fan, so if you need to pick up another fan or replace it or whatever, you totally can. You just break out this little piece of plastic, put the fan there, boom, dual cooling. But in order to install an operating system on this, we need video out. You know, we've reviewed other NAS that have HDMI out or, or VGA. This one it doesn't have it, but it does have PCIe slots. So you can use a low power GPU, like our Quadro P2200 here, basically any GPU that doesn't have a built-in power connector. Physically, there's enough room for that X16 slot, but don't be alarmed if you see the expansion card going past the end of the slot. The end of the slot is open to accommodate cards that uh, are wider. This is basically what your motherboard does, except that it puts a dummy X16 slot in, even though the slot may be only wired for X8 electrical. Well, this one is wired for X8 electrical. We'll run into X8 electrical. And the end of the slot is open because QNAP doesn't want to have a, a dummy X16 slot. They don't want to, you know, lead you on, get your hopes up. And then you look at it and say, oh, this is only X8. Now, if you're gonna do this, one other thing I'd recommend is this. This module on the side is called a SATA disk on module. If you very carefully remove this here, it's got a little bit of hot glue holding it in. If you very carefully remove this SATA DOM module, it's eight gigabytes. It contains the, well, maybe 16 gigabytes. It depends on your particular NAS. If you remove this SATA DOM module, that has everything on it for the operating system from QNAP. Eight or 16 gigabytes is nowhere near large enough to be able to run TrueNAS. So if you wanna do this and you don't wanna occupy any of your slots, I would recommend that you get a 128 gig SATA DOM module. Um, in our case, I'm just gonna use an M.2. This is a Xeon dual core four thread. It does a clock kinda high, but uh, in my opinion, QNAP probably should have juiced the CPU a little more, but since this is only a four bay model, okay, I can kinda forgive it. The higher end models in this H series, like the, the eight bay, yeah, that's a true four core, eight thread, a little bit better situation. But for my purposes, this is gonna work out just fine. I have pre-created our NAS USB stick. We will use the front USB, it doesn't matter. I've also attached a USB keyboard. Just a good old $5 Dell keyboard. We've got a monitor hooked up to our GPU. And as soon as this thing, you know, gives me some indication that it's alive, I'm gonna start spamming the delete key on the keyboard. Allow me to play you the song of my people. That is the computer janitors. Hey, that's a good sign. We're getting a starting screen. Oh, look at that. It's a BIOS. Everything is a computer. Ah. As, uh, as you go on and get older, you will be more and more uh, angry when you discover something is a computer that you understand, but the manufacturer has obfuscated away the computery bits of whatever it is that you're working on. QNAP has done a good job here making the computery bits accessible. This is very good because 
ZFS, QNAP natively supporting ZFS and warranting ZFS, very good. This is a Xeon platform, error correcting memory, again, very good. They haven't gone off the deep end customizing things in ways that they shouldn't. Good job, QNAP. There's our BIOS screen. All we have to do is come over here to boot and pick USB disk 3.0. That's what I've done. Now, the disk on module will sometimes show up as a USB device in this. It's a bug in the BIOS. Don't worry about it. Look for your USB stick. You might see DA0, it might say USB disk module. I assure you that's our SATA disk on module. It's not very big and you shouldn't install there. And even if you try to install there, the installer is gonna say that it failed. So don't do that. It'll auto detect any other attached devices. we get two 800 gig NVMe in here. That's what we're gonna install the operating system to. 800 gigs is complete maximum overkill for the boot volume for TrueNAS. You could use a much more reasonably sized uh, NVMe. I'm actually probably going to convert the TrueNAS install to standard FreeBSD later, so just look over that. Basically, you just next your way through the installation and it'll take you back to the menu. Now, spoiler alert, uh, this thing has NICs in it that FreeBSD doesn't like still. Like, actually, it supports them. It's the Realtek 8125Ms. They su they're supported, they work, everything's fine, but they're not enabled by default. Why? Why? Why is it like this? I don't know. But that's okay. We'll reboot. I'll show you how to enable them from the command line. All right. I've pulled the USB stick out. We're going to reboot. We've got to go into BIOS one more time. Basically, we just go over to boot options again. Look for UEFI OS. The installer will ask you, do you want UEFI or do you want standard UEFI on this platform? Now, once you are done with this, you don't have to keep the GPU in there. So once this is booting and everything is good, and pop the GPU out, it's great. But it's not working yet, we got one more thing we gotta do. All right, when it boots up, you get a menu. Cool. Number nine, shell. Now we're at the TrueNAS core command line. IFRE load and IFRE name. You tell it to load yes, and then you tell it where the file is. If you want to, you can do ls l slash boot slash modules slash if underscore re dot ko to make sure that the kernel module is in fact there. It is there on our installation. With that there, you gotta reboot again. You can use VI or Nano or Pico or whatever your favorite editor is to add that. I use VI, because why not? Now the thing that we're gonna look for when this reboots is does it see RE 0, 1, 2, and 3? Remember, it's got four 2.5 gig NICs. That's pretty awesome. Oh yeah, pro tip. When you go to upgrade TrueNAS and something goes horribly wrong, if you have a GPU in there, from this boot menu, you can actually pick the previous version of the kernel. So if for some reason this thing isn't booting, you can shove a GPU in here and use a keyboard to help troubleshoot and diagnose, including booting into a previous version of the TrueNAS kernel. Excellent, this is what we're looking for. RE103, it's like link up, link down. I got one network cord plugged in, so one up, three down. That makes sense. This is gonna boot up and it's gonna tell us what its IP address is at the bottom here. And then we're good to go. Great, it's working. Now we're gonna shut down one more time because I wanna pop the GPU out. Now that everything is installed and working, you can verify that you can reach this device on your network. You should see the TrueNAS login screen and it should prompt you for the uh, password that you set. The username is root and the password is whatever you set in the installer. And you're pretty much good to go. You can log in, do everything from the web GUI from then on out. Oh yeah, another pro tip. Don't leave the case off of this in normal operation. The airflow design of this chassis depends on the case being on. If you don't, your, your mechanical hard drives are gonna overheat. So the one beep means that it's booting. You can also see I've still got my keyboard connected. And if I turn NumLock on and off, NumLock goes on and off. And there we are, we're good to go. That's pretty much all there is to it. If you get lost, the guides on the level one forum. TrueNAS offers a lot more flexibility than the default QNAP operating system, but the QNAP operating system is supported by QNAP. You really shouldn't want to do this. QNAP gives you ZFS out of the box. It's performance tuned, it's performance tuned for their hardware. There's a lot of reasons that make sense why you would never actually want to do this. But just because it's not recommended doesn't mean that you can't. 
So I have, and this is fun, and it's exciting to me because I'm using things in ways that wasn't necessarily intended. If enough people do this, this may actually become a supported way that uh, QNAP lets you do stuff. It's possible, I suppose. Although IX Systems, the people that support TrueNAS, may frown upon that because you can just buy hardware from them that's supported and has a warranty and has been qualified and all that kind of stuff. Now, some of the QNAP appliances have a front little LCD screen. This one doesn't. But if you are uh, co-opting one of the QNAP devices that does have an LCD screen and it's reasonably standard like this one, Xeon based, uh, you can actually get the LCD screen to work again. There are, there are folks that have worked on that project. So yeah, I don't know. I'm really happy with how this project turned out and this is gonna be, uh, and this is gonna be something fun to do some apples to apples comparison with performance. This Xeon D CPU is maybe a little slow for 10 gig or dual 10 gig, especially if I'm asking it to do a lot of other stuff in the background. But uh, yeah, double check QNAP's operating system because it'll probably do whatever it is that you're needing to do. But if not, this is an option. I'm Wendell, this is level one. I'm signing out and you can find me in the level one forums.